okay so in this video we'll be um, discussing about no, the component method in getting the resultant of vectors no? so this uh, method is very useful if you are going to get the resultant no, of vectors no? for example uh, vectors are uh, more than uh, two vectors no? so here we have here a a graph no, of three vectors no? so we have vector a uh, vector b and vector c no? so each of these vectors no, uh, they are they are um, with angle no, with respect to the x-axis no? so in getting the resultant no, okay, if we are going to get the resultant of these vectors so we have R, no? so that is our resultant. So by component method, so we need to get the Rx, no? we will square the Rx and the Ry. No? So getting the sum of their squares and getting the square root will have us our resultant. No? And our Rx, no? so this is the X component or the horizontal component of our resultant R, no? X component of R. And our RY, so that is the Y component of R, okay? So, how we are going to get RX? So, we just have this one, no? RX is equal to the sum of all the x component of our vectors no for vector a we have ex then for vector b we have b sub x and for vector c we have c sub x no so getting the value of this one by using angle theta no so for a a sub x we have a cosine theta sub 1 because uh, our 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 a sub x, no, this is our a sub x here. We use another. So this is our a sub x. So this is um, adjacent, no? adjacent with respect to our angle. So that's why we use the function theta. Okay. Plus b. So again, cosine theta three plus okay c. Oh, no, this is not cosine theta 3 but cosine theta 2 plus C cosine theta 3. Okay. Now for this one also, no, aside from getting their sum, we must also have the sign, the sign convention. So if that is positive or negative. Okay. So for this one, all components going to the right, no, going here, are all positive. So our AX must be positive. Our B sub X, no? So if we are going to have our B sub X, so our B sub X will be going this way. So our B sub X also will be positive. Then all of the X component going to the left, no? For example, this one is C sub X, no? So C sub X. So our C sub X is going to the left. Therefore, it must be negative. So we will rewrite this one. So our... Our a sub x, so this will be positive, so a cosine theta 1. Our b, b sub x is still positive, so b cosine theta 2. Then our c, so that is negative, so negative cx, so that is negative c cosine theta sub 3. So this is now how we are going to get our our Rx, no, our R or R sub X or the X component of R. Now for Ry, no, Ry, so we have, so that is also the sum of the Y component of each of our vectors. So we have A sub Y plus B sub Y plus C sub Y, no. So for this one, we have our A sub Y, so that will be A sine theta because the uh, the the component no a sub y will be opposite no if we are going to transpose this one here to the side of our 
of our vector so this will be our a sub y so it is opposite to our, with our angle so that's why it is sine no? so a sine theta 1 a plus b sine theta 2 so because our b sub y also is in this part no? so then plus c sine theta 3 no? okay so for the sine convention no? so this will be our b sub y here and this will be our c sub y no? the direction of our c sub y so for all of the y component going up so that will be positive now for this one our a sub y and our c sub y are going up no so you just see the vectors so they are also going up so that's why our y component for our uh, vectors the two vectors a and b will be going up also so they are positive no okay we just put the one here then our b sub y so it is going down so all y component vectors or uh, y component no vectors going down will be negative so therefore our b sub y will be negative so doing that sign convention so we have a sine theta sub 1 so our b sub y is negative so we have minus here b sine theta 2 then plus c sine theta 3 so we have now the uh, the sum no, of our uh, of our x component and the y component of our three vectors so we could now have the y and the x component of our r with respect to the angle no, of our resultant with the horizontal, no, if we are going to get that one, so that will be tangent, uh, theta will be, so we have it as, as theta r. Uh, no? So the angle of the resultant. So that will be r tangent over, so r tangent, so that is the, the r tangent of r sub y over r sub x so if we're going to graph now our our vector r no our resultant okay so maybe we just scale this one a little bit no bigger and we just move over here okay So this will now be our vector r. Okay, so this will be our r and its angle with respect to the horizontal will be theta r. So that is how we are going to get the resultant of our vectors using the comp component method. Okay, so now we will have some examples. Okay, so we have now this example. So for this one, we need to find the resultant no, of our four vectors. No? Vector A, B, C, and D. So their, their magnitudes are 300, 500, and 400, 200 respectively. Then with respect to the horizontal, so these are the given angles. So 45 degrees, 90 degrees, 280 degrees, and 120 degrees no so we need to find the resultant so the very first thing to do is first to graph no our given vectors okay so we just graph that one okay so this will be our solution Okay, so first we need to graph our vector A. So our vector A is 45 degrees with respect to the horizontal. Okay, so this will be vector A, which is equal to 300. And this is 45, no? Theta sub 1 will be 45 degrees with respect to our horizontal. Okay, now for vector B, now, vector B is 90 degrees with respect to horizontal, so it must be on the vertical or the y-axis because that is 90 degrees. Okay, so we just grab that one, no? Okay, so if 
will be 500 no so our b okay b which is equal to 500 no so our theta 3 is a uh, theta 2 is is 190 degrees okay then we have c no for our c so c so C is 280 with respect to the horizontal. So our angle, our angle measurement is counterclockwise. So from here to this point, no, for on our y-axis that is 90. Then from the y-axis to the next, uh, to the x-axis, no, again, so that will be 180. Then from this one to this one, this will be uh, 90 plus 180. That is 270. So maybe, no. So by just looking at it, we could say that our uh, uh, vector C you know, will be um, on this part you know, or in this quadrant of our graph. You know, that is our vector C. So our vector C is equal to 400, which is with respect to this one, you know, to the whole one here. So from here... To this part here you know, that is our angle that is 280 degrees you know, from this um, from this rotation you know, but if you are going to only consider this because it's the nearest distance to the horizontal so that is 280 then the whole rotation is um, 360 you no know? so we will have 360 minus 280 we will use another uh, another pen here no so this will be um, 360 minus 280 degrees so that will be equal to okay, we'll sub our calculator okay so we have 360 minus 280 no that will be equal to 80. No? So 80. So this will be equal to 80 degrees. So we just call this one as our uh, theta sub uh, theta 3 for this one. So we have this as theta 3 prime. No? Because our theta 3 is this 280. But we are considering the nearest horizontal uh, angle no? or the, the horizontal inclination. Next, we will have our D, which is 120, no? uh, 200, I mean 120 with respect to the horizontal. Okay, so, let's have that one again. Okay. So, if this is 90, no? 90 here, so our uh, D must be over on this side. No? So, we will have this one. So, from here to here so so from here to this part and we'll just have this one here no? from here to this part that is 120 degrees no and because this is from here to this part is 180 so we we'll just have the nearest again the nearest angle so this will be 180 minus 120 so that will be equal to 60 degrees no and we call this one as uh, theta sub 4 prime okay so now we could now use this graph in getting our horizontal and vertical component of our of our r no or our resultant no now if sometimes i will uh, like to have a new graph for this one considering only the nearest angle you know, the nearest angle to our uh, the nearest angle with respect to the horizontal you know, of our vectors so we just have the an, uh, an equivalent graph you no know? this is for simplicity purposes okay, we will use the color green and uh, the color blue you know? for uniformity okay then angle A, and uh, the vector A, 
Okay, vector A. Then we have vector B over here. Okay, so vector A. Then we have vector B. Then vector C, uh, D. No? This is a vector D. And we have here our vector C. Okay. So... This is vector D, which is equal to 200. No? So here we have this one, vector A, 300. So our theta is theta sub 1, which is 45 degrees. Then we have here vector B, which is equal to 500. Okay, so we have here our theta sub 2, no? which is for the symbol, it will be 90 degrees. Here we have our D, which is 200, and the nearest angle with respect to the horizontal is uh, 60 degrees or our theta 4 prime which is 60. Then this will be our C which is equal to 400 and the nearest angle with respect to the horizontal will be uh, this one here which is our theta 3 prime which is equal to 80 degrees. Okay, so now we will get our vertical and horizontal component of each of the vectors and getting the sum of that will have the components of our resultant R. No? Okay? So first, we will have our R sub X no? or our uh, X component of our R. So we have here for this one, we have the component of our A X which is in this direction so that will be positive plus no, our b sub x so b sub x is here no so that will be positive also no? so we have our b sub x or if you will uh, see this one no? because our b is vertical therefore uh, our b sub x will be equal to zero because our uh, b is um, on the y-axis or mainly it has only the vertical component no? but we just prove that one using our formula and why it will become zero okay then we have our D no? or maybe we have our first our C okay for C no? so the CX will be here no? so that will be positive so plus CX then our D so because D is going this direction so our D sub X will be going in this direction and this one will be negative so minus d sub x so we'll have a so our a is 300 no we will have first the formula here so a cosine theta sub 1 no plus b cosine theta sub 2 plus c cosine theta sub 3 prime no plus uh, no minus 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 d cosine theta 4 prime or 4 sub 4 prime so our a that will be equal to 300 so theta sub 1 that will be 45 plus our b is 500 huh? our cosine theta sub 2 or theta sub 2 is 90 then plus C, our C is 400 also, 400. Then that will be cosine theta sub 3 prime. So our theta sub 3 prime is equals to 80 degrees. Then minus D is 200. So cosine theta 4 sub prime, our theta, theta sub 4 prime, that will be 60. Okay. So getting now their sum, no? So... Um, our cosine 45, no? Cosine 45 for this one. Okay. So we just first have 300, no? Cosine 45. Okay, so that will be 212.13, no? 212.13. Uh, now, to prove that this V sub X is equal to 0, so we just input this one, no? So, 500 cosine 90. 
because the cosine of 90 is 0. So that's why, that, that's why it is, this will become 0. No? So to have a faster calculation, so you just input uh, everything. No? Just input everything on the calculator. Let's move our calculator over here. Okay. So in, just input this one if you will be using a scientific calculator. So we have 300. So I just adjust my calculator first to have the simplest. No? So we have 300 cosine 45 plus 500 cosine 90 plus 400 cosine 80 plus ah no, minus minus 200 cosine 60 so never forget the closed parenthesis no? and we'll have 181.59 no? so just read your first so 500 cosine 45 then cosine 90 400 cosine 80 then that is 200 cosine 60 okay so we we have here 100 so our r sub x is equal to 181.59 so this is our the magnitude of the component x component of our r okay so maybe let's just copy this one we will continue on another page no? So we have here. Now we will be solving our um, our y no? y component of our r. No? So you have here r x. No, uh, no r x but r y. So r y is equal to a sub y. So our a sub y will be going up. No, based on our vector a. So a sub y plus. So our b also is going up. So our b sub y will be positive. Then D, no, our D, so it is going up no, because our vector D is going up. So our D sub Y also will be going up plus D sub Y. Then we have C here, so it is going down. Therefore, our Y component of our vector C will be also going down and that will be minus or negative. So C sub Y. No? So using now the, uh, the trigonometric formulas of this one, so we have A sine theta sub 1 plus b sine theta sub 2 plus d sine theta sub 4 prime minus c that will be sine theta sub 3 prime okay so substituting so we have 300 cosine 45 plus 500 cosine 90 plus 200 sine 60 minus 400 sine 80 okay so we will use here our calculator no? Okay, so again, we just input everything no, on our calculator. So we have, so we have here 300. Okay, so I believe I made a mistake. No? So before that, so this is not co cosine but sine. No? Sorry for that one. Okay, so we have this one as sine. Okay. So this will be sign here. Okay, sign and this will be also sign. So I was thinking why I wrote cosine here, but our formula from the top is sign. Okay, so we just could 
continue the calculation for this one. So we have 300 sine 45 plus 500 sine 90 plus 200 sine 60 minus 400 sine 80. Okay. So we have 491.41. Okay. So we will have here Four hundred ninety-one point forty-one. So this will be equal to four hundred ninety-one point forty-one. Okay. So solving now for our R. Okay. So our R is equal to the square root. Of our r sub x or the x component of our r times a plus the square of the y component of our r. So we have from the previous page it is 181.59 for our rx. So we have a square root of 151.59 squared plus the square of the ry which is 491.41. Squared. No? So our R is equal to so we have square root of so here this is the parenthesis for the square root but we will also add a parenthesis no for our R X so add first open parenthesis we have one hundred eighty one point fifty nine squared Okay, so let's just enable first our calculator. Okay. Then plus, so another parenthesis for this one. Okay, so we have 491.41 squared. Then you must add a parenthesis, no? For, so you must add a parenthesis. For this parenthesis, no, for the square root, no. So that parenthesis is for the square root, and you will have equals. So that will be five hundred twenty-three point eighty-nine. Okay. So our R is equal to five hundred twenty-three point eighty-nine. Twenty-three point eighty-nine. Okay, now for our theta, no? so our theta, so that will be R tangent or inverse tangent, um, R Y over R X, so we will have inverse tangent, that our R Y is 491.41 over, so this will be our R X. 181.59 no? so our theta is equal to so let's have first our calculator here enabling that okay. let's move the entire screen okay so we have so shift tangent so Open parenthesis for our 491 of our RY, 491.41, then divide 181.59, okay, then close. So this last parenthesis is for the open parenthesis here, then equals. So that will be 69. 71 no? okay so let's check no 181.59 okay then our 
is equal to 491.41 okay so so 69.71 uh, is our angle no so 69.71 degrees no okay then we will have our graph no? okay so we will put our graph over here so we will make this one a little bit bigger okay so we will have here our resultant vector so resultant vector so our r which is equal to equal to 523.89 and our theta here so that is theta r I forgot to put here the theta r because that is the angle of our of our resultant so this is equal to 69.71 degrees. Okay, so I hope you understand something in this video. No? This discussion about the component me method of getting the resultant of vectors, and especially you understand the example that we have solved. Okay, so thank you for watching this video, and as always, enjoy learning.